victorious, shared it all with us. He is the one that died to save. Jesus, the one who was cast out to bring us back in. Good morning to St Mark's and everybody who is joining us across Gillingham, across Medway and wider afield. Welcome to our all age service today. You are so welcome and we are really looking forward to sharing with you this morning. So the all age team have been busy putting together lots of interactive and fun things this morning to help us learn more about God, our Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit on a day that we call Trinity Sunday. And our all age services are exactly what it says on the tin. All age means a time for us to be all together, where the very youngest of our community can learn from older members of our church and our older members of our church can le learn from our younger members of our community. And it's a time that we spend together learning and living our lives for Jesus. But it seems only right that at the end of what has been a very challenging week across our world as we've seen events unroll in the USA and here in our own country to spend some time reflecting on that. I'm, I read something this morning um, by Lisa Coons who's the director of 24-7 prayer in the USA and so I'm going to read from her um, a, a powerful narrative that will help us just think about what that means for us on an individual level, but also as a church, as a community. And she says, Dear Church, this moment is a tipping point. Let's not miss it. It's time to commit humbly to take a stand in prayer for racial injustice and reconciliation, both in our nation and in our church. None of us is immune to racism. We must accept this and we must intentionally come against it. As a movement, we're putting a stake in the ground and the vision is Jesus. Mother Teresa said, no colour, no religion, no nationality should come between us because we are all children of God. So we're going to start our service this morning, our time together, coming before God the Father. Pete Gregg, who is the co-founder of 24-7 Prayer, helps us to understand how it's good to come into the presence of God and how we can be still before God. 
In his book, How to Pray, he teaches us that we should start by stopping. We should start by pausing to sit quietly. Psalm 46 verse 10 says, be still, be still and know that I am God. And so we're going to take a couple of minutes to do just that, to pause. So I invite you to lift up your hand and there's a diagram coming up for you that talks about breathing and this just helps us settle our breath as we come into God's presence. So we start here, we breathe in and we breathe out. We breathe in and we breathe out. We breathe in and we breathe out. And we breathe in and out. And we breathe in and we breathe out. And as we pause, we're going to come before God and ask him for forgiveness. It's a way that we say sorry. So let's join together and say together, all of us, God, forgive me for the angry words I didn't mean to say. Forgive me when I had a sulk that spoiled a happy day. Jesus, forgive me for the mess I left on the floor the tea I wouldn't eat, the hasty way I slammed the door. Holy Spirit, forgive me for my selfishness and all my little sins and help me to be better when another day begins. What a great God and what a forgiving Jesus. What a helper the Holy Spirit is. Amen. And we're going to carry on now joining together as Elizabeth and her band lead us in some sung worship. Good morning, St. Mark's, and welcome here today. We ask that you join us in worship. So stand, sit, kneel, dance, whatever you like today, and sing and praise with us as we sing God's glory in this wonderful day.
Good morning everyone. As you can see, Jen and I are in our garden on the Darlan Estate, just adjacent to the Darlan Banks. We're going to be reading the scriptures this morning. It comes from Matthew 28 verses 16 to 20 and it's from the Message version of the Bible. This is sometimes called the Great Commission. Janet will start with verse 16. The eleven disciples were on their way to Galilee, heading for the mountain Jesus had set for their reunion. The moment they saw him, they worshipped him. Some, though, held back, not sure about worship, about risking themselves totally. Jesus, undeterred, went right ahead and gave them his charge. God authorised and commanded me to commission you. Go out and train everyone you meet, far and near. In this way of life, making them by baptism, in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Then instruct them in this practice of all that I have commanded you. I'll be with you as you do this day after day after day right up to the end of time this is the word of the lord thanks, thanks be, be to god, god. christine what do you understand about the Holy Trinity? I understand about the Holy Trinity. It's just like the leaves on the clover. So who I got clover here and and it is like the Trinity because the Trinity is inside my clover. So first we've got God the Father, who, look, who is our Father and he looks after us, just like God. God the Son, Jesus, who died on, died on the cross for our sins. Finally we got God the Spirit, who guides us in many ways and helps us in many ways. And they make up one whole. What? is God. Just Ooh. like I said in the beginning, he helps us in many ways. And like the at, and like at the last. And when you find a three leaf clover, remind yourself of the Trinity. Thank you very much. That's very helpful finding a three leaf clover to remind us that three leaves make one thing.
So I have called this talk this morning the call to discipleship. And the reason I've done this is because as we look at the Great Commission in Matthew 28 verses 16 to 20 this morning, I want us to grasp the three main points from this particular passage in the Bible. Um, in order to do this, we need to look at the context in which this particular passage comes after Matthew 26, 20, verse 26 through to Matthew 28. We know that this particular passage comes after Jesus was arrested, handed over to Pontius Pilate, sentenced to crucifixion, beaten, mocked and scorned by the soldiers and then forced to walk all the way to Golgotha. And there he was crucified before being buried and rising again three days later. So the disciples have just seen their teacher, the Messiah, dying on the cross. And then in Matthew 28, 16, 17, once Jesus has risen again, the disciples finally come face to face with Jesus and worshipped him. However, some doubted, um, as we've heard, and they didn't want to fully baptise themselves into worship. They were holding back. They just spent years with Jesus learning, following and trusting him. And even after he told them that he would rise again, they doubted what Jesus had said. And I think there are times in life that we all struggle and sometimes we all doubt God, but he still provides. He always carries us through. And that brings me to my first point. Luke, if you could go to the next slide, please. So we're called to trust God wholeheartedly. In Psalm 37, 5, it says, first commit your way to the Lord, trust in him and he will do this. And then as we go to Isaiah verses 26, verse 3, it says, you keep in perfect peace those whose mind are steadfast because they trust in you. If I can have the next slide, please, Luke. Corey Ten Boom said, never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. God knows the plans he has for us, as he says in Jeremiah. As disciples, we need to trust God wholeheartedly, especially in difficult and harrowing times. In verses 18 to 20, we're reminded that all authority has been given to Jesus in heaven and earth and that the same authority has been given to us. So we should not be afraid to use the authority given to us. We are called to therefore go and make disciples of all the nations and that we are to baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Luke, if I can have the next slide, please. The second point is a link to the theme of the service. You see, in order to be able to go we have to fully know who god is we have to understand that god the trinity in three parts there is god the father jesus the son and the holy spirit in john 14 verse 6 it says jesus said to him i am the way the truth the life no one comes to the father except through me before Jesus died, he told the disciples that he would send his helper to be with them. In John 14, 16, 17, we read, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you, and be with you forever. And the Spirit of truth, the world cannot accept him, because it neither sees him or nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be with you. The Holy Spirit is the one that gives us wisdom. When we cannot find the words to say, the Holy Spirit is the glue that is our daily helper. But we have to daily renew our filling of the Spirit. You cannot have one part without the other two. So you can't have John 8, 16 on its own. You can't have John 14, 26 on its own. And you can't have Acts 10, 38 on its own. In order to understand who God is, we must have all three together. Therefore, making up God, who is three in one, Father, Spirit and Son. Luke, if I can go to the next slide, please. My third and final point is that we are called to go and make disciples in all nations and teach them to obey all things in which God has commanded us. 
When Jesus told his disciples to go, they did just that in Acts 1 and Acts 2. We see how the disciples are all in one room together and Peter spoke to them. And then they elected two who should join and they prayed. And God chose Matthias to join the apostles. In Acts 2, the Holy Spirit comes down and lands on each person in tongues of fire. They are filled with the Holy Spirit and they pour out onto the street and are speaking in native languages for everyone to hear. They're accused of being drunk. And then Peter stands up in Acts 2, 14 to 21. And he explains that these men are not drunk. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. In fact, they've been filled with the spirit. As God said, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Brothers and sisters, we are in a season of uncertainty in this country. We are in a season of turmoil in around the world. We are called to go and make disciples. There are ways that we can share the good news of Jesus with our neighbors. There are ways we can show the love of God to people in this time where people are living in fear and worry and anxiety. Folks, a gospel call is urgent. And we are called to follow where God the Father calls us to go, wherever it is. And here at St. Mark's, our mission statement is very clear. We are living for Jesus. We are loving Gillingham and we are learning together. My challenge to each of us is how can we share the love and good news of Jesus in our daily lives? Being disciples and making disciples for God. And Luke, if you can go to the last slide. Um, but I want to leave you with this. David Wilkinson said, when God calls you to something, he is not always calling you to succeed. He's calling you to obey. The success of the calling is up to him. The obedience is up to you. Thanks, Ben. Um, there's a lot there for us to think about and a lot there for us to respond to. And perhaps whilst you're just reflecting on some of those points that Ben helped us with this morning, we want to play to you um, a short film that we've been busy putting together over the last couple of weeks that involves lots of our children here in our St Mark's community. Thanks to Chris Blewett, who did the physical putting together of this film, but it's an opportunity for us to hear from our children why we believe. We believe in God. Who created the world? At the beginning of time. Who am I? We believe in God. Who came to this world? To, to bring, bring us new life. We believe in God. He gives us the strength to live. And the faith to believe. We believe in one God. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. This next song is called I Will Follow and is by Chris Domlin. It might be a new song for some. It is a lovely song and it's in response to what Ben has been talking about. If you don't want to sing along, please just sit and listen to the beautiful words of this lovely song.
Elizabeth and Ben, that was a real opportunity for us to um, reflect on some of the things that Ben brought to us. And just as Ben was speaking, and as we were watching that wonderful film made by our children and listening to that worship, I was reminded um, of what Ben said, which was, we are called to trust God wholeheartedly. And on the Facebook Live page, Jane Banner Martin has just focused on the importance um, of, of, um, of obeying, of being obedient um, at times such as this, without a focus on succeeding. And I, I feel like that's a really true, um, uh, it's a truth um, for us to hear this morning. Because if we really are going to put a stake in the ground, and if we really are going to make disciples of all nations, we have to trust God wholeheartedly, and we have to be obedient. And in order to understand God, we have to understand the part that Jesus the Son and the Holy Spirit, our helper and guide, plays in our lives. We're going to have a time of prayer now and Jess is going to lead us in that. And perhaps that will be a real opportunity for us to respond in our hearts to what we've heard and perhaps what we've seen around us over these last weeks. Thanks, Jess. Thanks, Becky. Um, 
before I start the prayers today, I wanted to tell you a little story. Um, I know lots of you have followed my journey um, to my new job, which isn't actually that new anymore. I've been there nearly six months um, and it's great. And I'm still happy to go to work every day. And, and thank you to all of you who prayed with me and prayed for me and shared that struggle. Um, and I really do love this job, but there was just one thing that I felt was missing and I was praying um, quite regularly, maybe not as regularly as, as I should. But I was praying for a Christian at work and, and a, a new job opening came up and I was like, I was really excited. I thought, yeah, this might be it. And, um, and then lockdown happened and I usually don't have work friends on my Facebook. And, and actually, I don't think before I had no big deal about church on my Facebook. And for some reason, um, no doubt it's a God reason, both of those things happened. And um, I've got no idea who's got the new post at work. But I know that the day after um, our last all age service, I walked into work and one of my lovely work friends said, you didn't tell me you were a Christian. So now when I go into work, I know I've got a Christian at work. She was there all the time. We just hadn't found each other. Um, so just another example of how, how wonderful it is that God answers our prayers and gives us what we need. And when I had a really important meeting um, a couple of weeks ago, I um, she called me just before it and um, prayed with me. I didn't ask her to, but she did, and it was great, and it's God um, really answering prayers. And despite the fact that I can see prayers that God's answered in my life recently, um, I still sometimes find it quite hard um, to pray. So I like to use things to help me. Um, Luke, if you can put the slide up for me, please. Thank you. So. I don't know um, if there are any young people or the adults here that watched our kids' church the other week when we use teaspoon prayers when we do thank you, sorry, please. Sometimes I use that just to start we start. Sometimes I use the word act to help me to remember that we need to claim or praise God and then confess, say sorry, um, say thank you, and then the last, what the last letter in Acts, the S, stands for supplication. Um, it's easier to say sharply missed. Um, so the, the things that we ask God to do can come at the end. Um, today, because it's Trinity Sunday, I found this prayer um, on the internet that I've used to help me to write these prayers and think about how to pray today. Um, and I'm going to do it in two different ways. So the first way is I'm going to use each line of the prayer. Love of Jesus, fill us. Holy Spirit, guide us. Will of the Father be done. To focus on some things to pray for. And then the second way we're going to do it is I'm going to use this dinner. I don't know how well you can see it, but it's on the screen there. And it's got those three lines on it. So that if, you're not, if you know there's something you want to pray for, but you're not sure how to pray for it, you can spin the spin, see where it lands, and use those words to get you started. Um, I'm just going to say in a big, loud voice, put the pencil at the top, the, the pointy bit at the top, otherwise it goes all over the table when you do praying, and then that makes all sense. Okay, so let's pray. God, I ask that you fill us all with love for all aspects of the Trinity. Help us to understand, but also to feel the awe of something so complex that it's really hard to understand. Love of Jesus, fill us. May we be filled with love and compassion and understanding. Love for those who need love, those who are sick, those who mourn, those who are oppressed and treat wrongly, those who are hurting, those who are angry. Jesus, you look at our world and we see there are so many places empty of love. Fill them with your love. Fill us with your love and send us to the unloved. Help us to share your love with others 
and in difficult times and situations. Holy Spirit, guide us. Remind us in the times we forget to give you the glory that you deserve when we lose focus on you. Holy Spirit, be with us in those times we forget to seek you and we feel stuck or overwhelmed. Guide us in the difficult times when we don't know what to say or how to act. But guide us in the fun and easy times too, so that we always represent you as well as we can. Guide our thoughts and our actions and our reactions and our feelings. Help us to be compassionate, especially when we need to speak out for other people and it feels scary or difficult. Will of the Father be done. Father, may your will be done. Use our weaknesses and the gifts that you give us. Provide an opportunity to speak about you and share you with others. Thank you for the hearts that you have prepared and will continue to prepare and for the courage and direction you've given us and will give us again. Thank you for, thank you for our willingness to do your will and be part of your plan. Not because we are amazing, but because you are. Help us to continually seek your will. To try not to give up when things don't make sense or don't go how we want or expect. And help us to not stop seeking your will once one prayer has been answered. Love of Jesus, fill us. Holy Spirit, guide us. Will of the Father, John. I'm going to use my spinner now. God the Father, Jesus, Holy Spirit, help us to remember that you made us in your image. Not just some of us, not those of us who look or act in a particular way, but all of us are made in your image and your voice. Love of Jesus, fill us. As we think about George Floyd, and black people and people of colour in our country and in our world who are not treated equally and fairly because of the colour of their skin. Fill us with your love so that we can love them. Will of the Father be done. God, we see all these people protesting peacefully. I ask that you keep them safe, God. I ask that your will is done and we move towards a fairer world. Holy Spirit, guide us. In Pride Month, we pray for equal treatment for all, irrespective of who they love. We ask that you are with us and you give us courage to defend the oppressed and be your hands where you call us to be, not just where it's easy or comfortable, or familiar. Love of Jesus, fill us. Help us as we think about everyone that's affected by the coronavirus in different ways. For those of us who are missing our normality, we're missing our church building, we may be missing school or work or the fun activities that we usually do. Be with us. We pray that you bring healing and comfort to those who are ill. And we thank you for those who care for them. We pray for the families of people who have died, who have died. Jesus, we ask you to comfort them and fill them with your love. We thank you for those who are providing practical help, emotional support, a listening ear. And we lift up to you those who need practical help or emotional support, or a listening ear. We thank you for those who are working to make vaccines and treatments. And we ask for wisdom and bravery for all those people making decisions about what to open and when. We thank you, God, for Zoom, for the internet, for technology, and for those gifts that are helping us still worship together at this difficult time. We pray all these things in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
we're going to end our prayers now with um, with the Lord's Prayer. Um, we've got a, a lovely video of it to help us. I'm just going to ask you, please join in. Um, I know it sometimes feels a bit weird praying with your computer or your phone, um, but just to remember that this isn't about watching, it's about us being together when we can't be together. I hope you've got the video. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, good morning, um, St. Mark's and other people that have joined us. I'm sorry if you were expecting Rob for family news this morning. Um, you'll have to make do with me. So what I need to tell you is something very, very exciting, which is we have a new church member. Um, Esoza has given birth to a baby girl whose name is Olivia. She was born by cesarean section on Wednesday. So that's so exciting. Um, and obviously we're online, which means that Saju doesn't get to grab the baby and parade her around. However, please pray for Esoza and her family for a swift healing and that baby Olivia is welcomed and you know becomes a really good addition to the family. So that's number one. Number two, um, if you've miss if you're missing children's church, don't forget it'll be back at nine o'clock next week. But you may not be aware that we have um, a new page along with our community missioner and kids in the community, it's called. And if you're missing kids church, you can tune in for a um, child friendly reflection at 8.30 each morning and at 6.30 in the evening for a bedtime story. So that's kids in the community on Facebook. So do check that out along with our morning and evening reflect, um, morning reflections, evening prayer on St Mark's Facebook page. Number three is that Bible stream returns next Sunday evening at 6.30. So I know you've all been really missing that. So if you wanna unpick a book of the Bible, listen to some really in-depth teaching and then have an opportunity to ask questions, tune in at 6.30 next Sunday evening on Facebook you can you'll be able to type your questions into um, the comment section and next week they're going to be looking at Ezekiel and just to give you a little taster if you're not sure about Ezekiel um, I just want to share what Nick Page says about the book of Ezekiel he says that Ezekiel is a stunt prophet with a bit of psychedelia thrown in Ezekiel is one of the most thrillingly bizarre books in the Bible. There is a thin line between prophet and nutter, and sometimes it seems as though Ezekiel has crossed that line. But Ezekiel was among the first group of people from Judah to be deported to Babylon, and his actions, along with his vivid visions, are designed to shock his listeners into understanding why this has happened and what is still to come. So if you want to hear more, if that's what's your appetite, tune in 6.30 next Sunday evening. Oh, and just one more slight point on that was, did you know 
that some rabbis, when they eventually admitted Ezekiel into the scriptures, they actually restricted access to the book to those over 30. Um, we don't do that now. So Bible stream returns next week. The office remains closed, um, but you can always contact us either via email at admin at stmarksgillingham.org or opsmanager at stmarksgillingham.org or you can leave a phone message on 01634 570489. You'll be aware that we do not have a, a collection, but you are able to give online now. So if you go to our website and scroll down about three quarters of the way down, there is um, an online giving option to contribute to the work of St. Mark's at this time. And finally, please remember the Medway Food Bank. Um, they've seen a massive increase in demand. And if you are able to, so if you are able to support them as well um, with food donations and or again, online giving, then please do visit their website as well. That's it for notices. Um, I will see you next week. <laughs>
he saves us all. Amen. We believe in God. Who created the world? At the beginning of time. Who am I? We believe in God. Who came to this world? To bring us new life. God. He gives us the strength to live. And the faith to believe. We believe in one God. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Thank you. We just wanted to show that short film again at the end because we were so delighted and encouraged by how our children came together to really demonstrate to us and say and shout out the reasons why we as St Mark's community believe in Jesus. I'm going to say a final blessing now. So please just take a moment to listen and receive the blessing of God the Father, God Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May God bless you with discomfort at easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships, so that you may live deep within your heart. May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression and exploitation of people so that you may work for justice, for freedom and for peace. May God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer pain, rejection, hunger and war, so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and to turn their pain into joy. And may God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that you, yes, you, can make a difference in our world so that you can do what others claim cannot be done to bring justice and kindness to all our children and the poor. Amen. And as we come to the end of our time together this morning, I just wanted to thank everyone who's been involved in this morning's service, especially to all the children who contributed to that film, to Henry for signing our Lord's Prayer, for Ben bringing such a powerful and challenging word to us this morning, for our prayers and for everybody behind the scenes. A big shout out to Luke, who has kept us going this morning. And for that, I am really grateful. So we're gonna to draw to an end, but we invite you to stay on. We're gonna play the brilliant song that Emily Mann has written for our new uh, series, True and Better. So as we conclude our service, please join in with these wonderful words and continue on the chat. And if you want to um, uh, uh, place any more prayer requests, um, please do that now because we will be taking your prayer requests away and holding you before Jesus this week. So thank you for joining us. And we're now gonna listen to True and Better. Have a great Sunday.
Jesus.